Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of Real Hope Conversations. I'm your host, Abby McFarlane, and this week we are diving into Exodus. You know, we've been looking at Exodus through the devotional for the last two years, and we are finally at the final chapters of Exodus. And to talk about these final chapters, but also to reflect on Exodus as a whole, I've invited my brother, Sam Fagan, to join me to dive deep into this huge book of the Bible. As all siblings do, I've thrown him in the deep end and let's see if he swims. So, (laughs) Sam, thank you so much for coming and being with me and being open to chat about this topic and this book of the Bible because it is so huge and I think forms a lot of our central understanding of God Mm. and who he is in the Old Testament. Yeah. So for you, Exodus, like what are the things that you think about when you think about the book of Exodus? Um, Well, hello to everybody. Lovely to be back with my sister. Um, And thank you. Yeah, Exodus, what a... uh, a huge reference point for us uh, theologically. Um, when you ask me the question, what what comes to mind or what do I think about? Uh, straight away, Prince of Egypt. Um, yeah. <laughs> straight away. Um, what you know? What a what a great job Disney did with it. Oh, and, I know. And was it Whitney? Was it? I th- there no, can it was be a Mar- Mariah. No, and it was Whitney. a duet. Yeah, it was a duet. Yeah, of course. Um, maybe we could bring that in over yeah. our voices right now. Derek yeah. Yo, who's on sound, maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think of that. Yeah, um, yeah it's funny, like Hollywood um, depictions of it, um, the chariots and the parting of the Red Sea. And um, yeah, so much goes down in Exodus. That yeah. book is is such a, uh, a key reference point for the story of Israel. Um, and, and I think also has framed a lot of, um, our modern thinking about Mm. God, um, and yeah, the way in which we relate to him, whether that's right or wrong, whether we need to kind of maybe check some of that stuff, which we could talk about today. Um, but yeah, Exodus is just a huge reference point theologically, biblically. Um, and there's so much in it. It's rich, it's dense, it's complex, um, And then also it becomes a real key reference point for Jesus as well in the New Testament. And there is a redemption, there's a renewal, there's a fulfillment that takes place. And so it's always good to keep that in mind that Exodus is a moment in time that we are to consider and learn from, but but also it is pointing towards Mm. something, it is building towards, you know, ultimately the person of Jesus coming and fulfilling all that that story was kind of pointing to prophetically. Mm. Mm. So we're at, and with that point and the story in the New Testament and how it points to that prophetically, but then also the relation to us in thousands, generations after Exodus actually happened. I think that we, when I think about Exodus, I do think about those big movie type moments like you but I never really related the building of the temple and the significance of that in the story of Exodus. Mm. I kind of left that in Leviticus because it's all about the rules and the, and, but I never saw the connection until we had started reading this in the devotional. Um, and I developed this real um, love of the details mm. of the details that we've been reading through over the last couple of devotionals when it comes to the intentionality of God when it came to the details of the temple. Mm. Um, And you talk about that in your devotional this week where you're looking at Exodus 39 and where Moses assesses the temple and sees that it is good and, you know, congratulates the Israelites for their work. And you make reference to uh, your wife, Shezzy, Mm. and the detail she puts into place when it comes to hosting and hospitality and having people over. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) uh, Having experienced it, it's second to none. Mm. Um, But she puts a lot of effort into details. Yeah, she does Um, as her partner um, in life, but also her partner 
in outworking um, those moments of hospitality and hosting others in our home. Um, it can be a frustrating and tedious experience. Um, I'm, I, I guess, reflective of my personality is like, oh, let's just throw it all together. It'll work out. We'll put some good music on and it'll be sweet. Like I'm, I'm much more go with the flow. Um, where she is very detail orientated, stresses about all the little things. Um, and yeah, I, I gave expression to that in the devotion. Um, and so she overthinks and overplans, but it always turns out, um, you know, just a beautiful atmosphere, mm-hmm. environment. She's very intentional about the space we're creating for others that would come into our home. And, um, and I love it. Uh, you know, it's it's can be a frustrating process, but the end result is always this, you know, beautiful night with people that we love and uh, great conversation, great food. And uh, I guess in her heart is she's trying to create an environment that values the people that are coming in. And so that's a really beautiful thing. And so, yeah, I was thinking about that when I was reading mm-hmm. Exodus 39. And yeah, it's crazy the detail that God asked them to kind of pay attention yeah, to yeah, yeah. Um, the color of linen and gemstones and inscriptions. And, you know, there's just hundreds of big and small little details that God was, was you know, really clear on when he was giving instruction around the temple, which, um, you know, is, is uh, a credit to the Israelites. Um, they, they fulfilled it. They did a beautiful job mm-hmm. from, you know, biblical record. It sounds like it was a pretty amazing, amazing space or an amazing um, place to worship God yeah. within. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's something that we can reflect upon and, um, and learn from there intentionality with God, yeah. learn from the fact that they were attentive to all the little details. Um, I think it's really beautiful, you know, that they um, thought long and hard about the space in which they were going to connect with God mm-hmm. in and that there was such a, a sacredness to mm-hmm. it, that there was um, yeah, so much thought out about the the lighting and the, the scent and the, the colors, the look, the feel and all of that. And I think we can learn from that today for sure. Yeah. Um, things we can apply from that, even when it comes to, you know, I've got friends and family who have got their own little like nook at home where they've set up and it's where they, their chair, where they sit and meet with God every day. And, um, you know, we have these, these rituals or these, uh, sacred routines Mm -hmm. that we, we practice day in and day out. And I think there's things from Exodus and that story, their attention to detail that we can, we can learn and apply in our own approach or our own, um, our own connection with God for sure. Yeah. Mm. I think that's the thing with Exodus. I think for so long it was full of those Sunday school stories, right? Mm. And in reading it in depth and not skimming over things, I think we've seen the richness of the love and desire God has to be with his people mm. and that his whole desire from Genesis was to live with his people in communion with his people. And because of sin and because of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that there was a separation. And so he's always been constantly trying to find a way to be with his people. And I think in Exodus, we see the temple as that that first place, Mm. that first place. But you were talking before we got onto this – video, podcast, and you said something about confinement that I had never thought of Mm. when it came to the temple. Can you unpack that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think what you just said, though, was really beautiful and profound and and we'd be amiss to just skim over it, that the temple in Old Testament times and um, for the Israelites, yeah, was was God positioning himself Um, within that community and really making a statement that I identify with you and I want you to identify with me. And, and that is reflective of God's heart and God's nature and, and his love towards the people as they went about their spiritual journey, um, which was not easy, uh, trials and challenges out of Egypt, into the wilderness, into yeah. the promised land, 
um, there was there was so many doubts and questions as we see revealed through the the story of Exodus. There are moments where they're you know getting it really really right and and they're following closely and they're hungry for God. And there are moments where they're getting it really wrong and yeah. they're building golden calves and um, there's you know all manner of things going on in the camp and so. Um, that's just a beautiful uh, takeaway from mm. the story that that we can hold on to within our modern setting is that that was a huge statement of God's heart and God's intention mm. towards humanity that that the temple was was God's way of positioning himself right at the center of their society of their community uh, of their day-to-day life and so um, yeah that's beautiful but then like you said, um, I think if we're not careful, we can read the Old Testament and particularly stories like Exodus and um, and the temple. And if we're not careful, we can um, uh, go about our relationship with God in in our modern day setting, um, you know, uh, post Jesus, post New mm-hmm. Testament, um, and, and we can approach God in the same way. That it becomes uh, really religious, yeah. Uh, because that w- that was kind of the the fine line that they're walking in the Old Testament, and it's all they knew up until that point. But that wasn't where the story was going to stay. Mm. Uh, God ultimately, um, you know, develops the story and uh, leads the people um, and leads humanity mm. to the person of Jesus, mm. uh, who lives this life of sacrificial love. Uh, died on a cross for the forgiveness of our sin. You just talked about the gap. Yeah. Jesus made a way to bridge the gap. And then, importantly, Jesus promises the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And this has always always been for me, you know, one of those passages of Scripture that I've had to wrestle with, that moment where Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples and says, hey, I'm going away, and it's, it's, uh, it's for your betterment. It's, it's, it's going to go well for you that I leave. Yeah. And it's kind of like, what do you mean? Like, that's so confusing. Like, you're, you're the person we've given everything for. You're here in the flesh. Finally, the Messiah we've been waiting for, the whole of the Old Testament, we were waiting in expectation for you. And now you're telling us it's going to be better that you leave. Yeah. But he was saying that because everything was about to change in terms of the Holy Spirit coming. And now um, 1 Corinthians talks about how the Holy Spirit has come and the temple is within us. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit fills us. And that is the huge shift that takes place, Old Testament to New Testament, that the temple went from this physical thing that was the place in which God resided. Mm. It was a, a phys- uh, sorry, a, a visible uh, marker for the people that um, we identify with God. His presence is here with us. And now in the New Testament, the temple's within. Yeah. And if we're not careful, we can approach God uh, like there is still some sort of confinement that he is there um, as opposed to to not here, yeah. Um, if if that makes sense, that that God is only in certain places and He is not in other places. But the New Testament tells us very clearly that actually, if 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 I'm there, if if you're there, yeah. then the Holy Spirit is with us. Then God's presence is with us. Um, and we actually the the picture is painted that that God is now not confined to a temple, but He yeah. is everywhere. His presence fills every space do you think that we still operate from a point of sometimes where there we still feel like there is that separation with god because of our humanity do you think that sometimes we operate like you said in that lack of awareness that god exists in church but then when i'm at a church God, God is with me when I ask him to come, not not with me all the time. Mm. Or in like, do you think that we still operate like that sometimes in society because the society we live in in modern day is so focused on self rather than an awareness of things going on around us? Yeah. Do you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of religious baggage that uh, we need to challenge and question yeah. in terms of the way that we approach God. Yeah. And unfortunately, the history of the church hasn't always gotten this right. And um, there has definitely been influential examples of the church historically where, um, 
you needed to come to the building or yeah. you needed to um, confess or uh, you needed to seek uh, the approval or um, the, 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 the wisdom, the guidance mm. of the said leader, the, uh, the chosen one who was the mediator. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are all these records and I think there's baggage because of that yeah. um, in this day and age. And yeah, I think uh, there are definitely things to question and challenge in terms of our approach of God. That's not to say that there isn't something special and unique about the gathering of the yeah. church. Yeah, uh, There really is. Um, the church is the bride of Christ. Yeah. And so there is something special, something unique that is taking place uh, when community of faith comes together under the name of Jesus and worships and and brings that offering mm. of of worship to God and connects in that atmosphere for sure but often um, we approach God like that he is you know I'm going to meet him on Sunday morning between 10 and 11:30 and then the rest of the week oh man I've just got to grip my teeth and make it through and it's yeah. up to me and I think that's a uh, yeah, a huge missed opportunity in terms of the life we we, we could live yeah. uh, and what's available to us, what we have access to uh, the other seven days of the week. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I really do believe that maybe some of the new uh, learning, some of the unlearning and some of the learning that needs to take place is the fact that uh, God's presence is everywhere. Yeah. What's lacking is awareness, Yeah. this self-awareness, this God awareness in our day to day. Yeah. That's over a coffee with a friend or in a conversation with a neighbor or driving the kids to school um, or sitting in my office at my computer. God's presence is just as much there yeah, as it is in the church building that I attend on a Sunday morning. Yeah. So with that, do you feel like Exodus is showing us, yeah, the rituals that the Israelites had to undertake in order to meet with God, because there was ritual involved in that. There were they, You didn't just walk up and meet God in the holies of holies. Like only certain people were allowed in there and there were there were spaces in the temple and around the holy of holies where people could come, but the, the priest could only go a certain way. Yeah. The high priest could only go into the holy of holies like once a year. And there were rituals that were undertaken, and we read a lot more about that in Leviticus that unpacks that. But I think, as you said, the New Testament, the coming of Jesus and the dying on the cross removes all of that. But do you feel like sometimes, because I certainly feel like myself, we I can get into the ritual of faith mm. as opposed to the relationship with God. And mm. I think the coming of Jesus and his death on the cross allowed us to no longer be separated and need ritual, but allowed us to come into relationship with him. But I sometimes forget that because my faith becomes rote. Do you think that we fall into the um, habit of faith sometimes? Um, yeah, you talked about ritual and relationship. And um, I am learning and on a, a, a journey of understanding this myself, uh, I don't think it's either or. I think it's mm. both. Mm. And um, the the people that I read in history, the theologians that that you know, it really resonate with me at this point in my life. I think understood the uh, the paradox or the the um, the it, it's both and, and and knew how to hold uh, the sacredness of ritual, but also the. Uh, relational and spontaneous and flowing nature of life with God that mm. he is everywhere and accessible at any given moment and and so yeah again coming back to that previous point I think it's awareness mm. within the ritual it's awareness that this is sacred it's not just oh it's it's ritual because it's what I'm told to do it's ritual because what my my parents have told me to do or passed down to me but it's it's ritual because it's sacred yeah. and God is in this and there is something deep and meaningful about this that has resonated throughout history mm. and has been passed down um, and this ritual is sacrament it is it is sacred it is holy it is um, a, a portal or a window or a way into a uh, a characteristic of God or an experience of God. And, and that's why we, we, we hold on to ritual. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it's not only ritual 
there's this this mystery there's this relational aspect to god that we see in and through the life of jesus having dinner um, with everybody and anybody um, so much of what jesus did his ministry was just on the fly was yeah. was unplanned was was not your um you know your traditional uh, church setting yeah uh, it wasn't conferences and it wasn't sundays i mean he did that yeah but that wasn't that wasn't the most part of his week. What we what we see in in the Gospels is the majority of his time and the the moments of transformation, the moments of of real human connection happened happened around dinner tables or as he was socializing, as he was sitting under a tree, as he was you know just just walking from here to there, and he would connect with people and would example to us, yeah. you know, somebody who was fully present fully aware, fully in the moment, um, not distracted by the noise yeah. or, you know, the things that needed to be get done, uh, needed to get done, wasn't confined to religious thinking. He was actually always pushing back on the Pharisees yeah. and, and the religious thinkers of the day who were trying to hold him to that. And he would often, you know, really rebuke it or challenge it with a question uh, or a new way of thinking about something. And so, um, yeah, I think ritual and relationship, it really are um, the the two sides to to the faith experience that you and I have been invited into. Yeah. So Sam, there are people who are watching. There are people who are listening to this podcast, um, and who are probably processing everything we've just said because we've just dived deep and like unpacked basically the whole Bible. <laughs> In 20 minutes because that's the point right from genesis there there was a point there was a purpose mm. to everything that god did yep. and everything that we read in the bible there's a purpose to it um and the purpose is jesus mm. and the purpose is him and the self salvation and the saving grace that we now have and then our call to action is to go and share that good news that faith that sal- saving grace that experience of God's love that we have been bestowed with as many people as possible because in the end when heaven comes back down to earth he will be walking and with his people again mm. summarized all of that in five minutes, um, five seconds. Sam, there are people who are probably wrestling with this and it, we've presented some new thought and some new ways of thinking and a new way of seeing Exodus because I think it's easy to skim over Exodus and move into the next thing and think it's part of a story, but it's not part, actually part of our story. Mm. What would you say to people to maybe give them a thought to think about for the rest of the week or an encouragement? In regards to Exodus. In regards to Exodus and everything we've spoken about this morning. Um, uh, I think, yeah, we, we've covered a bit of ground, but, but really the things that stand out when I think about Exodus is that God's heart is revealed in a really, really beautiful way. Um, it's almost like this, uh, this moment that, that takes place on a communal communal level, I'm trying to think of um, you know the biblical stories before we get to that point of Exodus, and and there's just something that happens at a much grander communal uh, mm-hmm. kind of level with God and the people at that point, and He delivers them from from the things that have been holding them back, and freedom from slavery and 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 oppression and all that they had experienced and. And there's this journey that then plays out there in the wilderness. And man, what a great metaphor or mm. a great parallel for our lives that as we journey with God, there's going to be things that we need to wrestle with. And that's okay. Um, that's part of the discovery. Mm. Uh, that's not to be run from or, or feared uh, or suppressed that those those doubts and those questions, you know, there's, there's so much that parallels with the story of Exodus where they're in the wilderness trying to figure this out and it's in those moments that that God again just shows His heart over and over again, and um, I remember sitting in a, a Bible college class, and and I'd never really thought about this prior to, but the lecturer was talking to us about Exodus and the Ten Commandments specifically, and he asked the question: Were the Ten Commandments given to save the people, or were they given to saved people? 
and it became apparent that oh the ten commandments were given after they were saved because they'd already come out of egypt mm. god had already done that saving work and often we think you know religious mindset religious approach to god i need to behave my way into relationship and so we think the ten commandments that i need to do this 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 and this but actually god gave them after they were saved and um, to me um, that speaks volumes about God's heart towards us. And the Ten Commandments were actually a way of regulating their experience with God, heightening their experience, helping them have a deeper, richer experience of who he was and also a deeper and richer experience of each other and community. And um, I, I think that's always stood out to me about the story of Exodus is that God's heart was was this heart of love and it's seen right through and the way that he interacts with them and the low moments mm. are reflective of humanity, yeah. of humanity's brokenness, of humanity's uh, propensity to, to, to walk away or to get distracted. And yet all the while, God is just always there um, saving them, uh, bringing Ten Commandments to regulate and help their experience of him and of each other. Um, a temple, this beautiful sign of God's presence. I'm with you. I'm there. And then the leading through into the promised land. Um, and that's a whole nother conversation, yeah. you know, to have another day with somebody much more smarter than me. Uh, how do you make sense of that? Um, and, and what took place as they yeah. stepped into the promised land? But um, yeah, I think when I read it, I see God's heart, a heart of love towards mm -hmm. humanity. And ultimately, we need to, as you said, um, uh, as modern day readers, uh, we get the end of the book and the person of Jesus yeah. that the whole thing was building to. And um, we're privileged just to now sit in that position and read from that position. And that should help us interpret uh, the difficult passages of the Bible mm. and stories of the Bible, and particularly the Old Testament, mm. that we see it through the lens of Jesus and make sense of it through the lens of Jesus. And so, yeah. Friend. We have covered a lot today, and I'm sure that there have been many thoughts or questions that have popped up in your mind as we've chatted, me and Sam, about these things. There certainly has been for me. But can I challenge you to maybe walk away from this conversation really reflecting on God's heart for you, mm. on the ways that he has shown up for you through your journey with him, the ways that when you were at your lowest he was still there. The ways that he has walked you through moments of wilderness, maybe even moments of celebration, and how God's heart for you is reflected in the things that he does and the ways that he shows up for you day in and day out. And second to that, can I ask you this week to maybe make sure that you're a little bit more aware of the presence of God around you. Maybe every day, Come back at the end of the day and think, how how did I see God today? How did I see God move today? How did I get see God show up in my life today? Maybe spend some time reflecting on that, sitting in thankful reflection for who he is and all he has done because the, the story is still being written, my friend, on your life. That heart that he has for you is still there. And he still has a heart for so many people, for all of humanity, to come into relationship with him because he so desperately wants to be with all of us and be a part of our lives. Look, if you've got questions, if you've got things that you would love to share with us about maybe how this series of Exodus has challenged you, what you've learned through the series of Exodus, there is a link below in the show notes please click on that and that will get you through to the Real Hope team. We would love to hear your reflections from Exodus. But also this is a conversation starter. And as I've sat down with my brother and had a chat about Exodus, maybe you have family and friends that you could sit down with and have a chat about Exodus, share this conversation with them, and then maybe have over dinner, over fellowship, have a chat about what you've learned and your reflections. But also don't forget, that we are journeying together. You, me, Sam, all of our contributors, all of the people here at Hope Media, we're journeying together to seek to know and understand God better, but also to share experiences of his love with as many people as possible. I hope you have an amazing week and I'm really looking forward to joining with you next week as we dive deeper into another topic on the next episode of Real Hope Conversations. See you then.